News opens its fashion vaults to the most important, influential, and trend-setting designers of the last 30 years. Designer Marathon brings you a unique chronicle of the milestone moments, the landmark collections, the exhibitions, the favorite models, and the creative process behind every designer's career. From the first to the last, from the shocking to the classic, follow the evolution of the world's top designers from rising star to fashion icon. It's all here in the vault, a retro spectacular timeline, a designer marathon. Belgian-born designer Olivier Taiskins launched his first collection in 1997 after abandoning his studies at the famed La Cambre School of Visual Arts in Brussels. When I think of Olivier, I think of these amazing full-length gowns that are sort of almost like a sergeant painting. You know, that kind of um, uh, wasted, but then with this amazing drama from the waist down. When a designer starts, they're sort of trying, they're experimenting a lot, and I think he never lost that experimentation. He really makes fashion very poetic and interesting, not so hardcore business like sometimes it can be. I think with Olivier what's so interesting is that design is so much part of his process and he is one to sit down and literally draw out every single silhouette hundreds of times until he gets it right. And he always has a very clear picture of the silhouette that he's looking for and how he wants that woman to look. In 2002, Taiskins took over at the House of Rochas, a dusty maison in need of a fresh, youthful eye, and his collections were generally received with acclaim. However, in 2006, Procter & Gamble closed the house. Taiskins quickly found a new home at another venerable maison, Nina Ricci, but suffered a similar fate at that house in 2009. You know, it's always difficult to be at the right house at the right time with the right team, proposing the right uh, fashion. Sometimes it's the perfect fit, sometimes it isn't. After his experiences at Rochas and Nina Ricci, the fashion community wondered what the shy young designer's next move would be and whether he would stay in fashion. I'm born with a fashion gene, I think, so I will always do what I'm doing. I mean, it's really something that comes fluently from me, so it will always be that. And um, yes, and you always try to look inside yourself something useful to create, something that uh, makes us evolving. And it doesn't have to be something that comes every three or six months, it can be something that comes later. But we're all, always looking after that special thing. In our times, he's one of the greats, like he really has it. It's not a nuance of styling, it's not a freak of history, it's not about connecting with the times or, or um, you know, sort of a good use of opportunities. He's just got it. And I really hope that, you know, he finds a place where he can do what he does again. I'm very happy and comfortable and uh, I'm very excited by anything where I feel that I'm going to find the highest potential for my expression and for to build something. So what I, where, I, where I am. <laughs> Dark drama, gothic fantasy, a touch of the absurd. These are the elements which made 21-year-old Olivier Thaiskin's runway show one of the events of the season. Only for Thaiskin's, who's a very young guy who cuts a perfect suit and a perfect jacket, but <clears throat> because of being so young and having so many different influences, he also shows um, uh, 60s influences, 50s influences, but the mix of it makes it totally interesting. So you have very uh, regular day clothes uh, mixed with uh, disturbed influences, which was very interesting. He had a lot of really extremes. I mean, he had a beautiful black sweater and beautiful black leather pants, but then he had that black leather coat with a girl covered head to toe and stuffed birds. I mean, he had those elements within the show, which was crazy, fantasy dramatic elements that work for a runway, that work for theater, but then he had within all those things too, a great sweater, great dresses, great color. I wanted to show like quite a sad happiness, it's something like uh, 
to show some up collection you want color I give you color push fuchsia and red and uh, with attitudes of very hard with a music more hard more down with a light more flashy and uh, I wanted that color powerful in the middle something very androgen that is more teeny at the, at the uh, hips and uh, very large for the bust, very cool and very masculine and like a bit smoking but completely deformed. It was a very difficult cut. But it's not real inspiration, it's, not, it's more an envy of balance, of balance of materials, balance of shapes, balance in the progression. Banking on the extravagant decadence of French fashion, Olivier Faiskin showed a collection that was dark and moody. Like vampires in search of eternal life, ominous goth overtones weighed heavy on the delicate layer of the princess. I want to have a, quite a, an extremist look of a monochromatic uh, in, um, big, big thing. And uh, I wanted to, to put very concrete with abstract things. And I wanted it class, black, and elegant. I'm mad a lot. Yeah, I like leather, fur, all the, all the, all the fabrics for tailoring. It's beautiful. And uh, knitting is very interesting. You need more to, to make a sculpture of it. I don't know. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like first the beautiful thing, the beautiful materials first, because it's my first step in my work. And after, I like to think about it. You give something different to each when you make a pattern or when you sew. The jacket, very masculine. Yeah, I like the jacket. Like, but give to a strong, strong allure to the woman. It's very important to have strong, strong, strong feeling of, of yourself. And uh, usually I think the, the tailoring for women is a bit too light. It's not strong enough, it needs more masculine. has become expected of the boy wonder of fashion, 23-year-old Belgian designer Olivier Faiskins. This season, presenting his most extensive show to date, he further developed his darkened fashion fantasy. Faiskins technically and artistically pulled off an often difficult silhouette. His leather work remains severe, but ruching on the sides added an accent of femininity. Although his palette of blacks and ivories prevailed, Faiskins flirted with color for autumn. There were spirited touches of jeweled colored tweeds. And a fatigue green looked anything but somber. This Belgian moved boldly through the night with larger than life evening wear and full skirts transported the wearer to another era. I thought um, his show kind of proved that he believes women should take up more space. I think the models had a hard time negotiating the runway, but, you know, it was for drama and, you know, bravo.
When I was a kid, I've always been like a, a little fashionable one. From his start as fashion's wonderkind, Olivier Tatkin has grown into one of the world's most celebrated designers. But he remains rooted in his hometown of Brussels, Belgium. Brussels has always been a, a very good city for me because it's, I don't know, people are nice, uh, you have really an uh, unstressful life, you're really in your roots. Antwerp is even very more fashionable, but here not. You really hear there is, you know, not all that. There is something common to Belgian designers. It's like if all these designers found the keys to not make bad collections. Unlike the others, Tayskin never went to Antwerp's famed Royal Academy and actually dropped out of Brussels La Cambre Design School. I didn't like so much the artistic uh, because I was coming from scientific schools and for me artistic schools was like not working so I, was, I didn't like the atmosphere. In the beginning of the third year I decided to stop. Tayskin began his own clothing line quickly gaining recognition, yet remaining grounded in his love of beauty and form. This, for example, is really the body of my good for the first pieces of clothing, the prototypes, to find really the way it falls. Oh. It's my cherished old bust, bust. What made this thing exist, you know, like when you see that, it's so crazy. I was drawing so much peacocks when I was little. It was really my favorite bird, my paradise bird. From Brussels to Hollywood, Tayskins quickly developed a celebrity following. A stylist of Madonna, she loved the clothing and she wanted to, to wear them. What I was feeling was like, okay, I'm really made for the job, finally, you know. It was just with this feeling, not like uh, I was not uh, crying or... <laughs> Singer Melissa Oftemar also helped ignite Haskin's career by wearing his dark, gothic-inspired look. I'm drawing since my childhood, and my drawings have all time, like fashion, I can say, evolved. It has passed through very colorful 80s clothing, and uh, it has gone to more, yeah, more emotional or more dark. I, I like mat mathematics, architecture, everything. I like to make by myself sometimes pieces, papers. And uh, so it happens, but uh, I'm also drawing of a collection very precisely. You have so much possibilities, you know? It's like when you have your body, you can make a a nice pen straight. You can make, I don't know, you can make something very like a shirt. a shirt going down, you know. You can make a skirt that is like very short or under the knees. You can make a large one. For fall 2001, Tayskin's collection transformed from the dark to a lighter, more accessible side. More women, less girly. But uh, yeah, it was a collection interesting because I, I wanted to begin more to work on yeah, this glam effect. My ambitions are big, so I want to work in the future. In, in, uh, but for myself, you know, I want to make couture one day. I would love to do uh, lots of things, shops, uh, and, uh, perfumes, and cosmetics, and accessories, and everything. I really w love everything. It's like all the little stuff a woman can have. I'm very uh, focused on my lifestyle, so like every Belgian, I think. It's like you really want to have a nice life. Absent from the runway for over a year, Belgian designer Olivia Theskin's return to the creative helm of her shots was surrounded by media flurry and great expectations. I think Olivier Tyskins completely, completely lived up to expectations, even surpassed them. I mean, it was a brilliant, brilliant collection. At a time when everyone is showing just very, very sexy clothes, you know, mini skirts, ripped things, and he, he went for old school couture-like craftsmanship. And I think that's very, very important in fashion at the moment. He really kind of updated a legacy of what elegance in the 50s meant and made it relevant for now.
26, Seskins is not overwhelmed by the 30-year legacy of the French luxury house. He sees only the possibilities. It's a great opportunity. This is a great name, a great house with lots of future and a very exciting project that inspires me so much. Olivier Tiscans was able to capture the spirit of what, what Rochas was, and it was beauty. Lace, lace everywhere. Rochas is known for his lace. And what did Olivier Tiscans do? He gave us an, an amazing spectrum of lace dresses and elegance. Once again, back to elegance. It's just the beauty of the woman, and everything's concentrated on this very feminine shape of the woman's body. And it is Seskin's daring talent that made him challenge the conventional form of a woman. Some non-believers murmured the word hunchback. It's not a hunchback, and it's like, I think that's silly to jump to that conclusion. I think what he did, though, is he was showing the, his idea and just taking it and expressing it and exaggerating it in all different ways. I mean, I really have to applaud someone that can show courage on the runway and show something new and different and take the risk of it being accepted by some people and not being accepted by others. I wanted maybe uh, silhouettes that give a sort of allure and without posing personally. Like I'm bored about fashion poses, like powerful poses, and I think I wanted some allure and some fresh, distinguished way to be, just with volume. Maybe it's that, and I just wanted it like that. It's like just a feeling. His color, he's an incredible colorist. Whenever he does color, it's exactly the right shape, exactly the right touch. It's always very uplifting. I like to surprise with colors. I think a collection you can you can read it on the show and uh, you discover it also you, as you discover the colors, you discover the forms. This mix was exotic for me, and I was excited about using them. Nature to excite that will revolutionize the House of Rochard. I'm, I'm inspired, and uh, I've, I have a big feeling, a strong feeling in me of what should uh, Rochard's fashion be, and uh, I try to explain it by the collection. And uh, I think we have to wait a few collections to maybe absorb it and understand it. It was great. I thought it was a real surprise. I don't think anyone was expecting to see that. They were expecting something great because it's Olivia Theskins, but I don't think anyone was expecting that. He took, you know, very much a romantic feminine point of view and, and translated it for the House of Rochard. I thought it was terrific. For his second collection, Olivier Theiskin blended old world couture details with modern Gothic glamour while always staying true to the Rochas woman. The Rochas woman, the woman concerned by Rochas in the life is a woman that has taste. Maybe I hope can really like some items and really bring them into her life and mix them easily. I want to project a sort of edgy idea of the Rochas fashion. Since taking over at Rochas, Olivier has been concerned with creating a wardrobe for his customers, or what the French call a garde-robe. I have very been focused to define the precise idea of Rochas, the garde-robe of Rochas. And this time it was interesting because I could discover well, how I could figure really personal ideas, personal theme, personal conception and notion of women into a Rocha style. And it's very interesting because it's not schizophrenic, but almost, you know, to really work in another label and try to really figure the good idea of what the brand is, what is the product, what is the look of that, and what is the smell, the spirit of Rocha's. And I wanted to also be confident and uh, know that I could adapt really personal notion of fashion of women into that style. 
one thing I thought was a little strange was the, I kept thinking a couple of girls were kind of hippie, and then I realized in some of them he had put actually a panier, or the French, I guess we call it panier, Marie Antoinette wore, under the skirts to give it a uh, shape away from the body. It was very much a continuation of what he started out doing, and I, I think, you know, we're lacking young designers that really want to do clothes for women, I mean, that, that really can, can work on the street, in the ballroom. For the ballroom, Dyskins offered beautiful volume in gowns that seem to float down the runway. The last one was fertility, you know, it's like cocoons, like ants, you know, little ants. And these are the notions are, that are like primitive and basically like naive and tragic that I wanted to figure in the dresses. Another one is like the lace, with completely embroidered, going in every, every, everywhere, it's like a magma of, of lace. And it's like it figures a bit like the chaos, and some lace is also appearing in it and uh, beginning to, to form something. You see, it's like basically strange notion that are personal, but uh, in the end I want beautiful gowns, beautiful girls in it. Fall 2004 marks season number three for young Belgian designer Olivier Bacon at Rochard. We caught up with him backstage. Yeah, and you have to not stress too much to check uh, Sometimes there are really little things, it's very couture collection in a way, and there are many details and sometimes it may happen that at a fitting we didn't check a little thing or so I'm all time observating, but I had not to do many things. Well, it still is an ethereal kind of beautiful lady-like woman and we wanted to just add a little bit more glamour and he did these really cool metallic shoes and all these different colors including copper, so we thought it would be nice to bring some of that into the makeup as well. Bayskin has managed to make couture fabrics and details relevant for a whole new generation. He's reintroduced a silhouette that was unusual when it debuted, but in three seasons our eye has become accustomed to his dark romantic style. I think what he's doing at Roche is incredible. He's taking elements from the very beginning of when he was doing Roche and he's playing around with them. Like it doesn't change around every single season. So now we have a few seasons under our belt with him. And it's just, just his subtleness of color. This season I wanted to explore more of the flu, the fluid, the sensual, to bring that. The blues, uh, the poor little roses fading, and all these little things. But we worked a lot, uh, many tailored things our own way. Also the technique technical clothes that are very like shaped and using very strange fabric like very actual new fabrics that are not used sometimes for the pret a that we can find in and uh, yeah I think it has to be very contemporary and very true to Rochas. Many jackets were also showed open it was a, a loosey attitude coming a bit more into the Rochas look and also many blues has large relief, really soft uh, silk uh, back and uh, I think it's very elegant when, we, when you walk, it's very elegant to wear that and uh, I think it's very true to Russia, it's very sensual. What I think I am, my position into this Russia story, like a hinge between the past and future and, and yeah, the butterflies were there to express the possibility to change look, like little butterflies were closing the, themselves and opening again in big morpho and uh, again and <coughs> little brown one. And so, but it was not the theme of the collection, but just to, to give more colors, to, to give a fragile feeling and uh, to decorate. Russia's name is very inspirating for that. Russia's is a very strong name for classy elegance evening uh, beauty taste and it was, it's very interesting for me to work all these after two short years Olivier Taiskins evidently feels at home at Rochas for summer 2005 he seamlessly laced the spirit of the label with a contemporary edge 
I'm focused only about what I think, yeah, that's very pretty cool to be like that today. To be very like this sort of chic, but you know, like uh, it's a little bit edgy. Mm -hmm. But in another way, I want this to be elegant, class, with a nice silhouette, a nice look, and uh, it needs an absolute uh, naturalness, uh, grace. He's doing this thing that is completely elegant, completely chic, but it's just for the modern girl. You know, in every single exit in that show, a woman could wear. There were no tricks. There were no like high shenanigans. There was no like razzmatazz. It was just sheer elegant clothing. I just want the collection to be ultra modern. Even if it's like a base of neoclassical look, I want this girl to be absolutely tasty and, and true to our world. I don't want to work like on classical clothes like we know, a, a coat or a, a jacket with a tailor color or these things or a shirt. I prefer to really find around items, around really models of clothing. So it's unconventional. Not only did Tastings add his unconventional take to bags, but he simultaneously expanded the Rochas frame. For me, Rochas is a house, and the house has all the aspects of accessories a house needs. And also, it's a, it's a look. I'm thinking about a girl. I see it. It's like a Parisian look. It's like a Parisian elegance, I mean. And uh, to me, it's like it goes with bags, shoes. His evening is beyond, beyond, beyond. He can take, he is doing the most modern evening out there. He can make a ball gown look new. Just the subtleties he does by, you know, showing a little bit of a bra and then um, giving the volume to the waist a bit, but still making it look incredibly sexy and sort of redoing the idea of a hoop but still giving it like this incredible newness. I wanted really to create the typical Rochas classics and to be very minimal and strong on the ideas of it and the, how it is, but it's absolutely unique. started off with with the hunchback but I think that Olivier has something very important and it's a signature I yeah, just wanted to make it long and I had the feeling to go really in continuity but with a theme more oriental Japanese and uh, classy also a bit rich in allure and uh, to me it's a continuity I, I understand why it looks like changing because the allure is also more sensual, a bit more glam. I love to work out the most I can the clothes and with a lot of embroideries, paintings, prints, uh, uh, a lot of uh, work on the fabrics. And to me, it's a really uh, big achievement to find the time to have all these fabrics in, on the point I want to have them. And I think that clothes, the, the interest is also to give him an identity by the technical achievement, because it gives a lot of signature to a cloth. His beautiful ball gowns retain their familiar silhouettes. It's a very interesting job also because I think that uh, Rochas, it has something very evening, but it has also, it needs gowns. To me, Rochas, it needs uh, beautiful gowns because it's it's a brand for gowns also and uh, even if I love to do day wear and you know like pretty cool city chic uh, uh, silhouettes I also think that it has a real interest to do also uh, beautiful drama gowns and I love to do them with a Russia's name on them they have very much a signature and it's a you know, it's an attention to detail, it's a silhouette, and it's a, 
a cut that is very specific of him. And I think that's very important, especially especially now that there's been so many moves of designers to various houses, it's important to have a signature, and I think he's developed that. And, and I respect him for that. I'm not usually working with a theme, but this time I really wanted to tell that story because I, I like the way Monet arrived through impressionism and emotions to the water lily statement. And so I wanted really to go to that process that goes a bit like a time path going on to the moment when it's really arriving to a more modern ending. give the sort of delicacy that he dreams about and can put it into a design that doesn't look old-fashioned. So he like pushes the edge, but at the same time he keeps a very sensitive cut to things. He sort of made a, he made a statement this time that was quite pared down. He, he said, you know, the trouser suit has the elegance of, an ev of a long evening, that you, a trouser suit can have that ease and that simplicity and that ability to make a sort of a lean, pared down statement that his evening wear had. The suiting is also because it gives a touch of, I mean, it, you breathe when you see sometimes a, a, a suit and I wanted to wear suits, I wanted to make flu but on the suits to work not like tailor, but really to work like I usually work the rest of the clothes. I love his sleeves. I mean, I love it. It gives like a sort of freshness. And it doesn't have to be too much, but just the right number, and it's nice to see. He's so young, and just to see that kind of work coming from someone his age is pretty amazing. So it's just so interesting. I think everybody in fashion should just really kind of watch how he goes because it's really an interesting story and in the end it'll be a very beautiful book. Makeup look at Rashad's evoked designer Olivier Taskin's exploration of an almost forgotten skill. A latticed headband represented the ladders used by the chimney sweeps of a bygone era, while the eyes took on a smoky shade. I mean, I wanted to work on a group of girls more adorable and more, I mean, relaxed and. And I, I wanted also to work with these colors of tones of black and really charbon. And I have chimney sweepers thing in mind with the chimney sweepers coming up in, above the buildings under the sky and having this strange life within the city. I mean, I must have seen one in the street and think it's a strange thing to be a chimney sweeper. His exploration of air was the evolution of last season's watery theme. It came maybe like a logic with last collection because it was work I started to work more about movements and more about fluidity. And today some fabrics are so thin that it's possible to to use them in a new way. But it's really refined and that you have you can have a few layers. You can see them moving like no other textiles before. And I wanted to work with cloudy things for more than, more than a year now, and it happened that the fabrics now were more better to do this. I really do what I want to do, what I feel a woman should, should like today, or today just after tomorrow. And I mean, so I just think about what I think is right for, for the image of girls, or the image of us. I just tried to think like that, and I just tried to make my best. And he did his best for seven acclaimed collections. However, fall 2006 would be Olivier's final bow. 
Four months later, Procter & Gamble, the American conglomerate that owns Rochas, closed down the fashion side of the business. Paris is one of the rare cities where the cosmopolitan stands side by side with the romantic. With Olivier Faiskins in his new position at the helm of Nina Ricci, the same union can now be expected at the French house. At first I didn't thought about any change, I just put myself into a dream about a vision and I'm really focused on a Ricci girl. And nothing could be more poetic than using the natural beauty of the Jardin des Tuileries as a backdrop. Tuileries is such a nice park, well, why don't we just show it? Faiskins has an innate gift for illuminating beauty. Last year, the closing of Rochas left the Belgian super talent unemployed. Hope is now high that Faiskins will work his genius at Nina Ricci. Today is going to be a drop dead show. He did a very smart thing. He, he played off of the spiral turn of the L'Air du Temps bottle and very subliminally worked it into almost all of his seam work. It was very modern, soft, very wearable, modern clothing. I wanted to work also on contrast with the perfume, bringing like grey urbanism and also contrasting modernity to Egeriac statements, like real elegant things. So it's very interesting to bring contrast in the brand. I think the Nina Ricci thing is going to be really interesting because it's a much more casual aspect than he's ever done before. Like, I think he's addressing a girl more in her everyday lifestyle, which I think is nice. I have to say that it's a really Ricci girl, but I'm not too much thinking about a brand. And I don't know, I think about whatever she would like to wear and, and to be really modern with a touch of nonchalance and cool. and. So I'm into that perspective. He's such a refined, poetic being, and uh, I think that uh, his clothes are, you know, it was so whimsical, elegant, so there's always the most wonderful pieces that, you know, one wants to wear every day. He's like super talented, what can you say? He has so developed himself as Olivier in his own collection and then he did gave us a whole new direction at Rochus and then now Nina Ricci is giving us another direction. I mean, he's a person that's filled with many songs. My passion is to discover new ways of working, to create. And I've been working, discovering new cuts and all these. So I've been, I'm focusing myself directly into that. I want to make things naturally because I'm working on beauty, elegance, grace. So it comes naturally like that. It's an instinct. It's a good, good first showing. And I think there'll only be greater things to come from him. For spring 2008 at Rojas, Olivier Taiskins elevated the simple white fashion tent in the Jardin des Tuileries into an extension of his design theme. I wanted the girl to come from nature, and in the same time, for, I mean, for the show, I wanted to have like the. My idea was like camera obscura, when you have the photographic machine, you have like a black box with an opening on the outside. So it's a bit the idea of the light coming in. It's so important for me in this collection to have this nature thing. Because for me it's like you would find girls coming from a bar on the side of a street, in the countryside, somewhere in the nature. It would be like a rave party, a festival or some... They would have like what they wanted to wear, like old dresses or new suits or cool jackets. For me it's more about free, being free-minded. And uh, this arty thing is a bit also connected with post hippie psychedelia moment. Like, uh, it's, it, all this is collapsing together. And I wanted also to have all different fashion trends together in terms of cuts, like 80s cuts, 30s cuts, 50s, and now. So all this is collapsing together.
I'm gonna feel like the girl is real when I see her, even if she's cool, totally painted, and it's real. It's a real. She comes. She's in real life. I wanted to finish this collection with a real rich vision, but in a way, same time, she, she has to be the, connected with all what we saw before. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, I love to make girls look beautiful, even if she's like in a jacket and a trouser or in a very beautiful gown. I mean, she, I want them to be really beautiful. And it's not just about being beautiful, but being free minded. Olivier Tayskins created a singular message that played out in a seemingly never-ending parade of rigorously cut gowns with 18th century details. I seen a dance spectacle that was very like, it was for Scythe, and I was shocked by it, by its, its rules. And I wanted to put in my work some statement rules, like the length, short in the front, long in the back. But after develop around that the, all the diversity of aesthetics and beauty that I can find and show the, the, all this diversity, you can work around an idea. For me, every silhouette was like a blank canvas when I start drawing them, and uh, so I had like this very strict white beginning, almost inspired by dance or some, something very strict. And little by little, I could bring like colors and uh, uh, more volume, more lightness, and uh, more drama, or more uh, historical, or more minimalist. I love that every time I approach a new dress, I start from zero, rethinking all the lines, everything, and trying to make like a new girl, a new picture. It's a feeling, it is nothing, everything is created, so nothing is like picked up from a reference. I think with our culture, we have these references, we have inside us a feeling of, a, of before, of now, and I like to bring all this together without putting a precise point of, on what is, you know, relevant of history. I like to be very just inspired and work intuitively. I thought it was so beautiful, so romantic, but still very strong and edgy. It reminded me like very sort of futuristic, but with like these elements of the Victorian era and the turn of the century. So loved it. It was so beautiful. For me, it was a collection of girls like uh, <clears throat> being all you know, like, there is a mystery on the collection, I think, when you unfold it. And uh, it, I wanted this collection to captivate by this diversity, but still being the same girl with these elements that are repeated. And I wanted lightness, beautiful. Uh, I wanted also something, you know, like, there is also something strong in it behind sometimes. I don't know, it's a feeling. It's a collection much about feelings. It was a foregone conclusion to the audience at the Nina Ricci show that this would be Olivier Taiskin's final outing for the house. I love that show. I mean, that show was a fashion show. I mean, from the music to the models to the shoes to the way he styled it, it was really, I felt like I was at a fashion show. beautiful, beautiful show and quite a special show in a season in which so many shows have not been that special, to be honest. It was amazing. It's literally Olivier's fantasies coming to life. It's like a space-age dream world. All the, like, colors, the blues, the pinks. I don't know if I could rock the shoes, like, all night, but they were amazing for a picture. I thought it was amazing and really beautiful. It was just, I was blown away, it was like breathtaking. 
gowns are like mind blowing. They're sculptures, they're amazing. I love the legs, the way the legs were coming out of the clothes. Those kind of iridescent colored pants and uh, that iridescent dress was incredible. I thought it was an extraordinary show, actually. I thought it was, um, it was everything he does well, all the kind of uh, poeticism and sort of dark glamour that Olivia Tuscan has always brought to the runway, and then mixed with that kind of rock and roll thing that he's also always done really well. I thought that that extremely elongated silhouette was dramatic and important and interesting in what people come to Paris to see in a fashion show. So it was absolutely spellbindingly amazing. I mean, that, that silhouette had such um, power about it. it. Reminded of his talent as, um, as, a, as a tailor and his ability to sculpt a fabric as well as make it flow. It reminded me slightly of the 80s of Moodler and that sort of silhouette. I love Nina Ricci. I mean, I, it, was a, it was an interesting circumstance because of what Olivia is going through, but I thought he presented a collection that was both really creative and really wearable. I think maybe they've made a big mistake in getting rid of uh, Olivia Tayskins. It really resonated with me in seeing something much stronger. Um, harder edged, you know, fashion is changing, it's not as romanticized, it's not as feminine, and Olivier really hit the right notes. You know, it's, it's sad to see him go, he's a great talent. I think the future is whatever he wants it to be. He's one of our great talents, and he's still young. I don't think he has to worry about anything. Less than two weeks after this finale, it was announced that it would be Olivier Taskin's final collection for Nina Ricci. In April 2009, it was revealed that Peter Coping, Mark Jacobs' former design director at Louis Vuitton, will succeed Taskins in spring 2010.